It happens the same way every time. You're trying to move out of your home and then you realize how many holes there are in all of your walls. It never looked this bad when you were there in person, but now it's horrendous. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to fill a hole like this in your wall so that your landlord doesn't find you or you can get the best value out of your house sale. Welcome to Adulting with Esther, the show where we talk about the things that you don't learn in school. I'm Esther, and today we're going to be talking about the four-step process to be able to fix a hole in your wall. If you're new here, welcome. Consider hitting subscribe down below so that you can be updated on our content when we produce it every Tuesday. If at any point during the video you want to check out the description, you'll be able to find show notes as well as links to products and resources I use throughout this video to help you when you try it on your own. Oh, and make sure you stick around to the end. I'm going to show you how to make a DIY sanding block so that you can have an even surface to sand even if you don't want to pay for it. Tools you'll need to do this project successfully will be a fine grit sandpaper, a hammer, or the end of a screwdriver is really helpful when you need to push an anchor into the wall. You'll need spackle to be able to repair the area itself and fill that hole. Here's the one I use. If you have it, a sanding block or an electric sander will give you a lot smoother finish on your wall than just sanding with a piece of paper by hand. But don't forget, I'll show you how to make a sanding block on your own at the end. And you'll need a putty knife to be able to apply the spackle to your wall. If you're dealing with anchors, another tool you might find yourself using is a pair of needle nose pliers. They allow you to get more leverage when you grab onto that plastic anchor. And lastly, you're gonna need your paint to recover the area when you're finished. Remember, all these tools are listed in the show notes in the description. Let's get started. You're gonna start off by prepping the surface. That means removing the nail, push pin, or if you had an anchor in there, removing that. If you can't remove the anchor, you can always push it in. I'm just gonna push around the edge with my finger. If it's a little bit rough for you or your fingers don't do the job, you can always use a hammer or the end of any of your tools works fine as well. Your goal here is we need a flat level surface from sheetrock to sheetrock all the way across the hole so that when you fill it, it stays flat and just looks like a wall instead of a big lump. Prepare your spackle by giving it a good stir. If it's a new can, this should feel a lot like you're opening a brand new jar of peanut butter just to aerate it and make sure it's all mixed together nicely. If it's a little bit older, you're gonna wanna scrape any of the nasty crud off the top and make sure that that is not used when you're spackling your wall. It won't give you an even finish and it won't adhere to the wall well because it's already dried. Duh. Get a reasonable amount of putty on your putty knife and apply it to the wall. If you're doing a small hole like a push pin, you won't need a lot at all. If you're doing a larger hole like the one I'm doing today, you'll need a decent amount on your knife. You can always put it back or take more out, so don't be too stressed. Apply the putty in a downward motion evenly and smoothly, and then do it again from the side as well. If you see that there's a lot of bubbles in your work, you may want to scrape it off and try it again. Your ultimate goal is to aim for a smooth finish that'll replicate what your wall looked like before you put this hole in it. Don't worry about slight imperfections, that's what sanding is for. Now, refer to your container for how long this needs to dry. Most spackles take 30 minutes to an hour to be dry enough for you to either apply a second coat if necessary or sand it down. Just make sure before you do either of those things, it is completely dry. But now I have a question for you. What kind of hole are you repairing? Is it from mounting your TV to the wall or did you put up a push pin with a poster? Go let me know what type of holes you'll be repairing down in the comments below. Oh, and if you're getting value out of this video so far, hit that like button. Hey friends, I'm back after letting it sit for a while and I'm gonna check to see if I need to do a second coat or not. When I'm looking at it, I'm seeing that there are some indentations here and I haven't even sanded it yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to sand it to a flat level surface and then I'm going to apply a second coat the same way I did before. We're gonna do this using sandpaper. Using an electric sander will make your work look more professional because it'll give you a more even finish on your wall and show less of the sanding lines. But if you don't have an electric sander, you can use a sanding block. Both of these options are great because they provide a firm, flat surface that'll prevent you from making a divot into the wall where you sand if you push in too hard. But don't forget, I'll show you how to make your own sanding block at the end of the video, so hang around till then. Using your sandpaper, apply light pressure to your wall in an even side-to-side -side motion, going over the hole to make sure it stays flat and shows an even transition between the old wall and your new repair. Use a shop rag or an old towel to wipe down your wall to remove any of the dust that's left. Give another close inspection at this point to ensure that there aren't any air bubbles. If you see that there were any air bubbles that are gonna leave an imperfection in your wall, now is the time to fix them and do a second coat of spackle. Repeat the process from steps two and three until you're confident that your wall has an even finish. 
I need to sand this until it is completely smooth. This is my final sanding. So if it's raised at all, it's actually going to show through on the paint when the sun shines or the light comes on. It'll make a shadow and it won't look professional at all. And if your goal is to trick your landlord so that they don't know that you put the holes in the wall, you don't want to do that. So before we paint, we need to dust the wall. I have some old shop rag here that I got at Home Depot. You can check the link down below if you want to get some for yourself. Great for cleaning. Um, but you want to make sure you get the dust off the wall because when it mixes with the paint, it'll add extra texture and it won't look good. Also, wouldn't advise wearing a nice shirt when you sand because now I'm covered in dust and I'm supposed to go to lunch in seven minutes. So that's going to be a problem. Look at that, it came right off. <laughs> Now it's time to put the finishing touches on your repair. If you have a paint that has a primer in it, you can go ahead and skip to that step. If you're using a paint that does not have a primer, you'll need to prime first to protect the sheetrock area that you just repaired. I have this guy right here that's literally three years old and I did need to stir it some because it was totally separated. But now it looks all good. I just gotta make sure I don't get any rust in it. So there we go, you can see. Using a roller or a brush, apply the paint evenly to the repair that you made. You may need to do more than one coat depending on the color of paint you have or the type of paint you have. If you don't have any remaining paint of the color that's already on your walls, a great trick is to chip off some of the paint before you start your project, somewhere around the hole, that way you can repair it when you repair the rest. Bring this chip of paint to the home improvement store when you go, and when you go to the paint department to get your new jar of paint, simply provide the employee with that chip of paint that you ripped off of your wall and ask them to do a color match on it. Let your paint dry fully according to the directions on your can. Most paints dry to the touch in a few hours, but in order for them to fully cure, it may take up to 24 to 48 hours. If you're intending to put new wall art or furniture up against this freshly painted wall, make sure you wait until it's cured. Otherwise, when you rip your shelf or your painting off of the wall, it might take some of your wall paint with it, and then you'll be stuck doing all this all over again. So I told you if you stuck around to the end, I'd show you how to make your own DIY sanding block, and I promise it's nothing too crazy. Simply take a dry kitchen sponge, preferably one you won't be using for food, and wrap your fine grit sandpaper around it. Use a rubber band to secure it in place, and now you've got your own DIY sanding block. All right, and there you go, there's your DIY sanding block. So let's go try it out. Okay, right, here we are getting down and dirty. Let's see if it works. Take our sanding block and... Well, check that out, we did it. We talked through the four steps that you need to do to be able to repair a hole in your wall. We talked about the tools you need to be able to repair a hole in your wall, as well as the four steps to be able to do it all by yourself and achieve some professional results. If you got value out of this video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified when we post new content. Don't forget about our question of the day. What kind of hole are you repairing? Let me know down in the comments. See you later.